Canva is constantly being developed further and adding new tools and features for users. It's one reason why Canva is my favorite graphic design platform, but it can be easy to get left behind pretty quickly and not even realize what new capabilities are right there at your fingertips. There have been so many great additions recently, so I wanted to walk you through some that I've been absolutely loving so that you can get started and level up your Canva game today. There are seven specific Canva tips and tricks that I'm gonna be showing you, but it's important to note that some of these, whether they be tools or apps are free to use, and others are only available to use if you have the paid Canva Pro plan. I do have my free 30-day Canva Pro affiliate link below, so if you think some of these tools might be useful for you, then feel free to click over with that and try it out for free for 30 days. All right, let's jump into our Canva editor. All right, so I've started a new project inside of Canva, and the first thing I wanna show you is called Type Gradient, and this is an app inside of Canva. So if you come to your left-hand side and click where it says Apps, we're gonna type in Type Gradient, and this is the app we're gonna click on. And this app is going to allow us to put some text in that we want to be colored with a gradient. So if you're not familiar with what a gradient is, it's basically choosing more than one color that you want to flow within your design from one to the next. So this is going to be a gradient that's actually within our actual text. So the first thing we're gonna do is input whatever text we want. So let's say for our design, we want it to say question and answer. So we can see whatever we type in reflected here in our design, and we're gonna continue with our options here. So it gives us the option to choose from a lot of different fonts so we can have a lot of fun with this. So for this design, I'm gonna just choose a fun one like this Ambry Garden 123, and we can continue to see what our design looks like here. We can choose our alignment, whether we want our text left aligned, centered, or right. This comes especially in handy when you've got multiple lines. So if I was to bring these words down to a separate line in my original box here, then I could choose some different alignments there. I could also choose the line height with this slide so I could add more space in between each line or bring that down. And then here's the fun part where I get to my gradient. So this is where I can choose all the different colors that I want to be included in this gradient. So what I'll do is just click on one of these circles and I can choose from this color spectrum or I can input a specific hex code here if I know what exact color I'd like. So if I wanted to use one of my brand colors, I could put that in and then continue clicking on each of these dots to bring it to the right color that I want as part of the gradient. So there I've got three colors that I've chosen, but if I wanted more than three, I could always add another color by just clicking on this gradient area and I can add as many colors as I'd like. I can also delete colors. So let's say I'm happy with those colors. Now I can come down to the preview and I can actually click on these little dots to adjust how the gradient is moving through the text and where the colors are coming from. So you'll see as I click on this and drag it around, the colors are changing in which direction they're coming from, giving it a different appearance with whichever way I pull this. I can do this with the bottom circle as well and just experiment with this until I get it to where I really like the positioning. And once I'm happy with it the way it is, I can click add to design and that'll add it to my project here, which then I can work with to increase the size, move it around, and do whatever further editing I need to do with this. This is just a super fun way to customize your text and your designs even more and add a lot of fun colors. All right, the next one we're gonna talk about is also an app. It's found in the app section called the Enhancer. So let's go ahead and type in Enhancer. And this is the one right here. So we're gonna click on that. And this is where we can actually use Canva AI to upscale an image and enhance the quality from low resolution to high resolution. So say I have a photo like this that I really like and I wanna use, but it's low resolution. We can tell because if I zoom in, we can see how blurry and pixelated and grainy it appears. So we're gonna wanna upscale this and increase the quality. So I put the original photo here just so we can see the before and after. And if I come to my enhancer and I click choose file, I can choose the one I want and it brings it up here with the original image. And then I have the option to enhance the face. So I would only wanna turn this on if there are people in my picture that I want it to specifically be aware of the faces involved. If it's something without people, I can leave that unchecked. But for this picture, I am gonna choose enhance face and then I'm going to choose enhance image. So this will take a minute to apply the changes and once it's done it'll show us the upscaled image. Okay so it says it's finished the image was upscaled by 500% so I'm going to click to add this to the design and I just want to kind of bring this over to the side so I can compare what these look like next to each other. So if I zoom in here I can see the difference here in the way that our faces look and really just the crispness and quality of the photo itself. It definitely looks a lot less grainy and pixelated than that 
original photo. Now, of course, with anything AI related, you may see some interesting changes that it made. Like for instance, with some of these hairs that are flying away in the background, it kind of made that look a little less natural. And some of the facial features just from knowing what we look like in our faces specifically made us look a little less like ourselves, but I don't think it's enough to take away from the quality that it did add to this photo. So in general, I think this is a great tool to use if you have a low resolution photo that you really just need to look less pixelated and more quality for your designs. Now we're about to move on to our third Canva tip, which is one of my absolute favorites. But first I wanted to let you know if you are a digital product seller or if you're someone who's looking to make money online by selling digital products that have something that is totally gonna help you, it's my free masterclass digital product powerhouse. This is a 45 minute in-depth training where I go through my four steps for starting and growing a profitable digital products business online. To be successful with a digital products business, you've got to know a few essential things like how to determine what product will sell, what's in demand in the market. You have to know some graphic design techniques and you'll want to know what software to use to create your designs and what platform to actually sell them on. So I go through all of those step-by-step -step inside of this masterclass and it's completely free to you. You can watch it on demand right after you watch this video. So I have that linked in the description box below if you're interested. I think it'll be super helpful for you as you start and grow your digital products business online. All right, so this next app is one of my absolute favorites and it's relatively new at the time of filming and it's called CanWave. So we're gonna come to apps and type in CanWave. And this is it right here. We're gonna click on this. And if you've heard me talk about the app Wave Generator before, this is sort of similar, but it has some different options, which I love. So with the Can Wave app, we can add waves to our design that look like this. So you may have seen some fun retro or boho designs with these sort of gradient waves in them. And with this app, we can actually create our own and customize them for our design, as opposed to just using a graphic element that someone else has already created. So the first thing we're gonna choose here is wave type. We can choose solid. We can choose gradient, or we can see the color gradient moving from one color to another here, or we can choose an outline. So let's just go with our solid option here. So we've got different solid color waves that are layered on top of each other. And then we can choose the shape if we want curved or pointy. So pointy is gonna be a little bit more sharp and this is more what curved would look like. So let's go with curved. And next we choose our number of layers. So we can add more layers if we want it to have a lot. We can take away layers. So let's say we want four layers and now we're going to choose a color to base this on. So again, I can just choose by clicking around on the color spectrum, or I can input a specific hex code if I have a specific color I know I wanna use, or I can use one of these recommended colors. So let's say I like this teal color. I'm gonna choose that, and then I'm gonna come down and further customize this with color variation, complexity, and height variation. So with this color variation slider, if I bring it to the left, it's going to be less and less of a variation between the different shades of that teal color. And if I bring it to the right, it's going to vary them more and more, making the bottom color darker and the top color lighter. So I've got more of a difference between each shade here. And then if I come down to the complexity slider, again, I can be changing this from left to right. And as I slide it, it gives me either more complex waves with lots of up and downs, or if I take it to the left, it's more simple and less of those curves up and down. So I can play around with this until I like the look of what I'm seeing in this preview box. And then the last thing I need to choose is the height variation. So again, using this slider, if I come to the left is going to kind of make everything a little bit more balanced and even all the way across. And if I move to the right, it's going to give a lot more variation between the different heights of the waves that I'm seeing. So I'm going to just play around with this until I'm happy with one that I see. And then once I'm happy with it, I can click to either generate again or add to the design. So here I'm going to add it to my design. And this is where I can, again, size it up or down. And then once it's added to my design, I can actually see each individual color up here in the top. So if I don't like one of these shades and I want to change it out for some something different, I can do that easily here in the color menu at the top. I can then further customize my design, of course, by adding something like text and even clicking to change this background color if I didn't want it to be white. I can just play around with this until I'm totally happy with my design here. All right, we're gonna talk about one last app here and then we're gonna move on to some that are not apps, but they're just different features that have recently been added. But let's come back to our apps and we're gonna type in Photo Stylist. This is the one called Photo Stylist and this is a really fun app where you can actually choose a photo, an image to input here and you can change the style of that photo to a totally different style, either based on one of these presets that they have
have or by uploading another one of your own images to model it after. So I'm gonna choose this little dog photo that I want to change into a different style. So this is the photo I'm working with. Now I can go with some of these presets. They have a sketch style, an abstract style, and an autumn style. So if I choose sketch and then click generate image, it's going to change that dog picture into something that looks like a sketch. So there is the final product of my dog sketch image, which I think actually looks really neat. I think it did a great job with that. Now I wanna see what it looks like with this abstract style. So let's choose that and generate image. And here it is in the abstract style. So this doesn't look totally abstract to me, but it's definitely interesting and definitely different than the sketch. So this might be something that could fit into a design. And let's try this autumn one as well. So let's go ahead and bring in our original picture, change this to autumn and generate. So there is our dog picture in the autumn style. So that basically just uses really warm, almost sepia tones to give it that autumn feel. So I think all three of those preset options are interesting, but I wanna try a few of my own. So let's go back, bring in our same dog picture. And now we're gonna click here to choose a file to bring in our own image for it to work with. So I chose this image that has a sort of watercolor design. I wanna see if it can take these colors and style of this watercolor image and generate something that looks almost watercolor. All right, this is what it gave me based on the image that I input. So it definitely is along the same color scheme with those light pastels. I won't say that this looks totally watercolor, but it definitely does more than the others did. And there are definitely certain parts of it that look more watercolorish than others. All right, I wanna try this one last time. So I'm gonna bring in my dog photo again and choose one last of my own image. And now I'm uploading this one, which has a lot of vibrant colors and it's sort of a paintbrush stroke style. So let's generate that and see what it does. All right, there it is. So that is definitely using the same color scheme, a very similar vibrant color scheme that was in that image that I uploaded. And if we look closely, it does seem to appear more like it has little paint brush strokes. So this is just really fun to play around with, to experiment with. If you have an image that you'd like to use in a different way, like turning it into a sketch or something more abstract, this is a really useful app. All right, so the next feature we're gonna talk about is really interesting. If I have something that I've uploaded that's let's say a flattened image, which means it's an image I've uploaded that can't be further edited. So for instance, this is a file that I uploaded. If I click on it, I can't change any parts of it. All I can do is move it around as one image. But let's say that I had created this and lost the original editable file, but I wanted to change out the text here. I can click and select this image and then come up to edit photo. And then under Magic Studio, I'm gonna click on grab text. When I do this, it's going to actually select the text that's in there and separate it so that I can then edit this text. So there it is. I can now click on this and move the text around like I couldn't before. And I've got text down here as well that I can move around and I can even double click and change what this says. So if I wanted to change that word to audit, I could do that. Now it's matched the fonts that I originally used in this design pretty close. So I have this one that it matched and is exactly the same as the original design. My script font here, they actually put into a different font. And I think that's because the original one that I used was not a Canva font. It was one that I actually purchased on a different website and uploaded into Canva so it couldn't pull it up because it's not in the Canva library, but it did give me the one that was probably closest to it, which is just slightly different, but I can then also click and change this wording out. So this is just super helpful. Like I said, if I have an image that has text in it that I wanna change, but I can't find the editable file, the working file where I could just click and edit. This grab text feature makes it so much easier to just go in there and change around the fonts and the wording. Okay, the next one is having to do with our blur brush. If you're familiar with the editing menu, when you select a photo, I've just brought this one over from the Canva library and I click edit photo. We've had this blur tool here under the effects menu for quite a while, but only recently did they add the blur brush. Normally it would have just been able to add a blur effect to the whole image, which we can still do by clicking whole image. But now we have the ability with this brush to pick specific parts of this image that we want to make more blurry and leave certain parts in focus. So with the blur brush, I can click to add blur or remove it. So I'm gonna stay on add blur for right now. And we can see as I move around on top of my photo, the blur brush there. If I want this brush size to be smaller or larger, I can change that with the brush size slider. So if I bring it down, we can see my circle got a lot smaller. If I bring it to the right, it's increasing the size. So this is just depending on how much area on this photo 
I want to cover quickly. So for this one, let's say I want to blur out kind of all the areas around this water bottle in the background and leave the water bottle in focus. I would probably bring the size down to a reasonable size to be able to like quickly cover this whole background while still being pretty accurate. Then I can also use the intensity slider here to change the intensity of the blur. If I want it to be like super, super blurry, or if I don't want it to be quite so blurry, I can change that here as well. So now I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to just quickly with this brush size, go over the majority of this background here. So there you can see I've covered most of the background. And when I release the brush, then it's going to apply that blur. So there's the blur, but you can see the areas I didn't highlight are not blurred out yet. So I left some space around that was really close to the water bottle because this brush size was too big to really be accurate. So now I'm going to bring my brush size down and make it smaller and come back around to cover the different areas that I'd missed before. So I can be really accurate and get right next to the side of that water bottle. Okay. So I've covered most of my areas here. And then if I have anywhere in the photo that I don't really like, or maybe I came too far onto the subject of the photo, I can click over to remove. This is basically an eraser to remove blur in the areas that I went too far possibly. So let me zoom in here. Like for instance, right here, I think I cut in a little too far on top of the water bottle. So then I could just take my brush slightly go over it a little bit to smooth it out and remove a little bit of that blur that's not in the right spot. So of course I could continue working with this until I'm happy with the way it looks and then use this in a design how I want. So that blur tool is just super helpful if you're wanting to get that really blurry background look, but you have a specific part you want to still be in focus, then this is such a useful tool for that. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is inside the app called Magic Media. You might be familiar with, this is where we can use AI to generate images and videos. So we're gonna stay on images here. And what we basically do here, I've shown this before, is that we're gonna put in a prompt of what we want it to create for our image. And then we're gonna choose a style that we want that image in and an aspect ratio. So none of this is really new, but I'm gonna show you a new part of this after we generate our first image. So let's just say, for instance, we want a lion in the sun on a mountain. Let's choose our style and our aspect ratio and then click generate image. And when it's generating, it's going to give us four initial images that we can choose from. All right, so here are the four images it gave us. So normally we could only just choose one of these or click to regenerate and try again. But the new feature here is that we can look and see which one of these we like the best. So let's say we like this one where he's kind of standing up more in the sun, it's more from the side. And if we want to see some more variations of this, specific image, we can click these little three dots here and select the option that says generate more like this. So we, once we click that, it's keeping that one image. And now the other three are going to generate as new images that are closer to this specific style. So there we've got our three new images and the one we liked. So then we just decide which one we would like to use and we can add that to our project. So the ability to have variations of one of the generated images is new, and that is a really helpful feature as well when you're trying to narrow down and get some more options for what you like. I wanna try this one more time with a different style. So I'm gonna say cat wearing glasses. And out of all these different styles, I think I'd like to try something interesting. So let me go with stained glass. I'm gonna generate that image, and it's gonna give me four options to start off with. And there are my four images, which are really interesting. I like all of these, but let's say I want to have some variations of this one. I'm going to click generate more like this. It's keeping the one I liked and it's going to give me three others that are closer to this style. And there we see our three other ones that are definitely closer to that original style, just changed a little bit in terms of color and some different specific details. But now I can click one that I like and use that in my design. So there you go, friends. Those are seven new Canva tips and tricks that you can use this year. I hope some of those will be useful for you in your graphic design. And don't forget to click over and watch my free on-demand masterclass digital product powerhouse that's linked in the description box below. If you'd like to learn my in-depth four-step system for starting and growing a profitable online digital product shop. Happy designing. Talk soon. Okay.